Hi, folks. Uh, I just finished a very long presentation with Leo and Jason. And we were, um, uh, we spent about three hours talking about parametric insurance and the semantic web and ordering chaos and emergence and game theory and a lot of things. And we only got no surprise like about halfway through our uh, slide deck. So we're gonna do it again next Thursday, I think 1 p.m. Eastern time, if you wanna make a point of noticing it. And uh, so part of the framing, like, you know, initially we just, we were gonna talk about this new kind of smart contract insurance uh, tied to disasters and things. And, um, but I really, I'm always trying to push the conversation more broadly and maybe harder and faster than people are really prepared to go. Uh, but I had come across some information that I wrote up in a, a blog post I put up yesterday, some thoughts. It was kind of a rough, it wasn't a really refined blog post, but it was on um, sort of the sacred feminine, like crypto and cybernetics, trying to usurp the place of the sacred feminine. And uh, and my, my friend Steffers has been doing a lot of work on the, the vagina dentata, <laughs> which is a concept that was sort of um, put out by this Enlightenment thinker, Emanuel Swedenborg, who was Swedish in the 18th century and um, evidently traveled various realms, occasionally meeting with women who had teeth in their vaginas. And then it became sort of this trope. And, you know, I think a lot of it is about, you know, the fear of natural life. You know, clearly we're moving into this age where we imagine that like evolution will be run by algorithms and somehow that the people who are running these new systems will start to create some form of like new life forms and in the marginalization of the natural and the womb and the tree of life and um, all, all of those things that make life possible. And so anyway, I wanted to make sure to incorporate that into this discussion of insurance, which might seem really um, unusual that I would try to mesh insurance and um, natural life. But essentially, the insurance products that are going to be rolling out on these uh, smart contract networks are, I'm sorry, there's people playing music really loud outside. Um, Hopefully they'll stop soon. Just a second. I guess they're just sitting, going to sit out there with their radio. Just a second. I'm going to shut my window. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> okay. Yeah, they were. Yeah. Windows down, it's a nice day. It's a nice day to have your windows down in the car and listen to some tunes. Um, but where was I? Okay, so um, this idea of the fear of the natural system, the spiral, right, the chaos, I think that's part of also the disaster management and the, the intention to push everything into the cybernetic homeostatic system that would be the twin, right? That would be the planetary computer and uh, Microsoft's uh, you know, or NTTs or whatever, like the, the creation of this cyber physical system to twin the world into a place that it can be controlled. And to me, that is it, like it's sort of an intentional disregard for the natural harmonics of the world, the creative forces of the world. And so I wanted to, to link it together because I've come across some things about complexity theory where they talk about the, the emergence of new life forms at the edge. And the edge is essentially they need to create a hard edge with a circle so that at that boundary between border and chaos, like there will be some emergence of some something that they imagine, like who knows if it's these crumbly xenobots or something like that. Um, but they're, they're trying to contain everyone in the circle so that at the edge where the order meets chaos, that they can catalyze something through shocks and energy pulses and programmable currency. And, you know, I mentioned that I had had a conversation a while back with Sophia Smallstorm and she, we were talking about how like the circle itself is really sort of a placeholder because it can never fully capture nature because pi itself goes on indefinitely. And so when you draw the circle, like it, it can only be a close approximation, like maybe a very close approximation, but it can never actually hold it. And that, that the natural system is a spiral. It is a, a spiral of, of, of time and space and it's dynamic and it has potentiality. And I think, you know, their goal for us is that we would live 
in the cybernetic world where we seed our, um, in the name of safety, we, we seed our potential um, to, to the technicians, right? To the technicians to, um, you know, do what's best for us by modeling and simulating the world. And um, so, yeah, so I saw this connection, like this spiral, uh, the circle, the cybernetic, the twinning. And so we, yeah, we spent like three hours talking about it. And, you know, I didn't want to incorporate this into the talk because I didn't really think it was exactly the place, but, um, you know, I've recently, I, I have been, um, Someone, someone called me a, a file, <laughs> like F I L E, that I'm a a closed file. The file has been closed, and I, and my file has been annotated and put in an archive. And and the person who said this knew exactly what they meant because they actually they manage digital media and um, professionally, and. Um, they know very well how I talked actually very early in the stage when nobody was really talking about the metaverse. I said, yeah, it's like a file cabinet. Like this is, this is how it's connected to Salt Lake city and Silicon slopes and Adobe it's file compression, like file compression and stored away. And that in these digital spaces, there will be permission files. It, everything will be run on a, on a filing system and you will have to have the right token. Right. And so really like Adobe running this, like we think of it as PDFs, but really it, Utah, Salt Lake City University of Utah was really central in developing digital worlds and file compression software and file management, permissions management, because that's, you know, that's what the metaverse is going to be. Like, do you have permission to go there? And, you know, when you imagine that experiences all become put on files, um, you know, I've, I've also talked about Melanie Swan and her discussions of this thought form of having mind files, right? And Trent McConaughey of Ocean Protocol, the, the idea that our tokens somehow represent us granularly and that we could put, be put on a file and sent out to Mars or for some interstellar st stellar travel, <laughs> you know? And um, so, yeah, so to have someone who knows all of those things um, describe me as a closed file that has been annotated and put in an archive, um, it's interesting. Like now I will, I will just say like, I'm not directly hurt because I realize that where this is coming from, like it's not coming from a place of kindness. And um, I don't think that that's something that that person would willingly want to inhabit that space to imagine me as just like a file, <laughs> like a, um, a file that you can put away and whatever, maybe pull back out once in a while and like look at it and go, Oh, I can't believe that. Right. Like, what was I thinking? Like, but as we navigate, like, as we traverse these next phases, the thing that they most want to contain is, is our spontaneity, is our relationality, is our connection to one another, um, you know, in all forms, right? Like, and collaborations, and they want to model that, right? And then they want to put that on a token trust transfer program and, and manage it. And so... To me, as much as I deal with really, really intense kind of dark stuff right now, right? Like every week it's the new thing. Like, okay, so now we're doing molten salt reactors and radioisotopes and disaster, you know, bonds and things that are heavy, but I feel like I, I feel like I need to learn them to to make sense. You know, maybe this is my task. I'm not saying everybody has to do the thing I'm doing, but this is what I feel called to do is to shine a light and maybe transmute or set a different intention. Um like it's a it's a lot to carry and um and we should be carrying things together i think i mean not i'm not saying everybody needs to su support me specifically but like it's too much for any one of us to do so we need to to find those points of connection and that they should be authentic right like they should not be something that you could imagine like that you've um had exchanges with someone and then that just simply becomes part of a a stackable i don't know a token a, a file a mind file a thing that's like locked away and something like that that to me feels very much like the web3 like the blockchain like the thing that we're all saying that we don't want to live in that space right um a, a closed file feels like a cybernetic system like a circle like 
I'm maintaining my homeostasis by securing this thing that might be problematic in my current thinking and putting it into a way, a way I can, I can put it away. Now the annotation aspect I think is interesting because that's metadata, right? Um, you know, clearly we are all very familiar with what, like what goes on your permanent record, <laughs> you know, like what gets annotated, you know, like when you find your, you know, medical file or what are the things are they saying about you, like in your school report card. Um, and I'm not really worried because actually I'm pretty confident, like I'm comfortable on my own skin. Like I'm doing what I'm meant to do, but a file in an archive, right? Because an, uh, the annotation in the archive implies that there it, it's part of a pattern system, maybe, you know, like, um, it didn't get disposed of really. It's it's out, out there being part of the, um, yeah, the gaming system, right? Like the gaming system, like how do you game me, right? Is that part of it? Like I, I get, you know, and again, I'm making, you know, I'm clearly also like making this myself and I take responsibility for the stuff that I'm putting out on my channel. Um, but to have someone sort of call you that and then say that they're gonna put it away and for whatever archival purposes, um, it's, a, it's a bit of an odd feeling. And so I just feel like I wanted a bit, I'm not here to, to, I'm here to make an observation and maybe a bit of a clearing because clearly, and I, I named this like, we are not files. I don't think that we want to live in a world of files because a world of files limits our potentiality. It limits um, serendipity. It, it limits spontaneity. It limits the chance that around the corner, like there's going to be some amazing opportunity or some perspective you never thought of, or as much as the unknown harbors scary things, it also harbors like the curious tr travel of going down the road, like and hoping that it's your own road, right? Of, of what's around the next bend. And in a spiral, you can kind of go somewhere. In a circle, a circle is a geofence. A circle is a geofence. And, and my friend Jason, she had, uh, or he had, he posted a video. Um, I can't remember. Video killed the radio star or whatever. And in in the, these this early you know video, they have this woman in magenta, like in the spacesuit, and she's like dancing in this clear cube, and or not a cube, she clear tube. She's in this clear tube, and she's dancing, and and that's geofencing, right? That's the metaverse. That's sort of like. And if we live in the cybernetic space of files and closures and control grids, because this is really, that's, you know, I, th I think that's a domination pattern, right? Like, oh, I've, I've closed that file and I've, I've annotated it and I've put it away. So I'm in charge. I've decided when it closes, I decide what I've written. I don't need to tell anybody what I've written and then I'm going to control where I put it. So maybe I'll pull it back out later. And that's, a, that's a control mechanism. Like that's, that's a control. That's someone who who needs to feel in control. And I, I have my own, like I have control issues. I am not saying I'm, I'm not controlling, um, but it's an interesting observation to make in such a public and outright way to characterize someone that way. Um, and so I think, I guess what I'm just asking today, because I'm going to read a John Trudell poem that I have about, it's called peace. And this is not the homeostasis piece. This is not the Irvin Laszlo piece. This is simply like aspirational, right? Because yeah, lines from a mind mind, right? Like, yeah, I've got a file. Someone has mined my mind and put it away it's out there somewhere. Um, now, I don't think they really capture me, whatever file they think they have. <laughs> I think I'm much, I'm not fitting in any file. Um, but there's a perception that you could mine someone and you could hold them as like some sort of asset. And um, yeah, so I'm gonna read a poem about peace but not homeostatic peace. And, but before I do that, I'm just, I've got my, I have my little lady here <laughs> that I made this one in Virginia when I did all my site visits in Virginia. And I have this amazing like round rock and it's like grounding because I feel like, you know, I don't know that this is what this person intended, but it feels like a metaverse trick. Like I've put, I've, my intention is to put you into some sort of digital realm, like lock you away or part of you away or the part that I think I have control over of you. And um, yeah, my friend Steffers was talking about Peridot, Peridot, like it's like a crystal that kind of keeps you grounded in the real. And so knowing this, 
knowing there's some imagery out there with some sort of weird like spirally circle things like I'm going to just ask the universe that whatever like containment element like that's perceived out there that the intention is to be outside of whatever filing system someone imagines they might have me in and um to know in my own quirky way <clears throat> I'm pursuing my own work and I'm going to try really hard Drew, to understand I have your book about non-commutativity. And because I think this is it. This is the fractal. This is the expansive nature of the world is to expand, right? To have the possibilities, not to have clothes, not clothes, like, you know, close you, close you, close you, close you. I have a whole pile of people I've closed and I put out there. So I don't like, maybe I can control when, how that works. But in that control, then you lose all the good stuff, right? Like you, you lose friends who invite you down to make dolls and then, you know, discover sacred springs and, and crazy baptismal fonts made out of corn graining bowls. You lose that part. So just to clear the air, I'm going to have my little beauty bowl and I'm going to just, it's harder to do inside than outside. Yeah, so we need to be in harmony with the earth. We need to not be afraid of the spiral, even though it's sometimes overwhelming with the unexpected. We need to lean into the possibility and the groundedness and not be stuck in the toroidal rat running maze, which you should, you'll see if you watch what Leo and I talked about and not, um, yeah, no, ver no, 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 no. We're, we're not turned into some close ended thing because I'm continuing to evolve. I have things to do and things to learn. So, you know, I just want to put out, I guess, put out an intention for peace, peace, <laughs> real peace that, that we get out of this sense of people as things, people as files, people as control systems, because I think it's going to be a lot more, interesting and there's going to be a lot more possibilities if we can um embrace the complexity you know that goes along with it so now i'm going to read lines from a mind mind and this is just going to be short today it's peace oh just on the side. peace word thought consciousness only way to live, peace, men, man, woman, brother, sister, remember caring love, peace, people leading kind lives, leaders aren't leaders, people are, peace, embrace obligations to truth, give each generation strong hoops, peace, our relations, all of life, harmony in all living things, peace. Proclamation, not enough. Our responsibility is to emancipate the earth, peace. Our balance, channel our flow, determination in human energy, peace. Past is current to future. We are stronger than we appear, peace. War maker, so far out of balance, he can't help but fall. Peace. We come from the beginning, a world with no end. Life. So that's just a short thing today. Although, like I said, be sure to check out our live stream. It's about three hours long. It's only the first of like, we'll probably do another two hours next week. Um, I do this because I feel called to do it. And um, yeah, there's probably a certain amount of digital twinning that's going on through all of these things that I'm doing. Um, but to have someone else make a statement about their possession of uh, this idea of me as a file um, that can be closed and annotated. Um, I would just say my friend Cliff always says like, 
consider what you're listening to. What are, what are you listening to? Is it kind? Because if it's not kind, then maybe it's not about you. Maybe it's not coming from you. Maybe it's coming from somewhere else. Um, because the world out there is kind, like our internal core is kind. That's the, that's the nature of us is to have kindness. And we have these carrier waves or navigating these crazy frequencies. Um, so I'm just going to, you know, I wish peace to this person. I, I wish no bad feelings, but I, I'm just going to call all of us to think when we're in a position of acting or speaking in relation to people, are we, are we, are we doing it in relationality? Are we doing it with humanity? Are we, are we giving of ourselves in a way that maybe we risk hurt, but we also risk possibility and lean into the possibility side and build that? Because I think, I think we can do it. I think we can, we can occupy, we can occupy a space where we're all building the spiral following the waves in in the paths that we we are destined to do um not as some sort of digital digital filing system so anyway thanks for listening um thanks for helping me sort of just clear the air on that and um yeah be sure to check out our um our detailed program <laughs> on, on um parametric insurance and the surveillance web. All right, bye.